all the circuit breakers that you will see in high and extra high voltage substation i mean anything that is above 52 kV those circuit breakers are sf6 circuit breakers and in this video let us understand what are the different components of this sf6 circuit breaker so what is a circuit breaker circuit breaker in simple language is a mechanical device which can make break and carry normal current and also the rated fault current for a uh, specified timeline so definitely in order to make break the currents it will need something that will interrupt the current right and that is what is the interrupter here now in order to support this insulator in order to uh, make maintain the sufficient clearances we would need a support insulator as well here and in order to uh, you know open and close the contacts we will need some mechanism which is nothing but the operating mechanism and in order to maintain uh, this complete structure on something steady we would also need a support structure and these are the main components of the sf6 circuit breaker on which we are going to talk about in this video if you are someone who are interesting in knowing more about the switchgear then i would strongly recommend switchgearcontent.com this is my personal recommendation because this website is having ton of information on the switchgear so you can see there is information on dc switchgear high voltage ac switchgear medium voltage switchgear switchgear testing gas insulated switchgear and so on you can also join their groups wherein you can get updates very quickly definitely uh, highly recommended if you are somebody who is interested in learning more about the switchgear there are lot and lot of articles available on this website i'll provide link for this website down in the description you can definitely go and check it out so coming back to the sf6 circuit breaker now let us start by understanding the interrupter now interrupter this top portion what you can see is the interrupter so this is r phase this is y phase and this is b phase now this is the main portion of the circuit breaker wherein the current interruption takes place and hence the name is interrupter. Now in this interrupter, uh, the regular current is interrupted, normal rated current and also the abnormal fault current which is uh, in the case of short circuit. So here is what you can see, it has uh, two types of contacts, one is the main contact and another one is the arcing contacts. You can see the blue portion what you uh, notice here is the main contact. Now main contacts are responsible for carrying the rated normal current and the resistance is uh, comparatively low. The another type of contact is the arcing contact which here you can see in the grey color. Now the function of the arcing contact is to carry fault current that happens because that current is very very high and the material of both these contacts are different because their purpose is also different and then there will be nozzles provided which will focus the gas on the arc. So whenever we are interrupting current there will be definitely arc and it needs a special treatment and for that what we use is an insulating medium. For this breaker of course it is SF6 gas. And this nozzle focuses this, that gas on the arc so that the arc quenching can happen smoothly. So everything this assembly is completely put inside the porcelain insulators or a silicon composite insulators. Both the options are available. So that is the interrupter and here you will see there will be one incoming and there will be one outgoing. So here you will be connecting the line and from here the uh, line will be going out. So basically we are connecting this switch in series with the uh, system. Clear? Understood? That is interrupter. So for 72.5 kV breaker, 145 kV, 170 kV, 245 kV circuit breaker, the number of interrupter required per phase is only one. So here is one interrupter. But as we move to higher voltage ratings like let's say 400 kV, then this single interrupter is not sufficient to break uh, the current and to, to maintain the sufficient distance because the voltage is very very high there, 420 kV we are talking about. So in that case, we need to use a multi-brake circuit breaker design. So you can see here we have connected two interrupter series with each other, right? This is 400 kV circuit breaker with two interrupter per phase. So this is switch one, this is switch two or the interrupter. So this is single phase of 400 kV breaker. So there will be three phases. So that means for a 400 kV breaker, there will be total six interrupters used for three phases. 
Similarly, when we go one step ahead, 800 kV, that is extra high voltage, then we need to have four interrupter in series per phase. So for total circuit breaker, for total three phases, we will need 12 interrupters, right? So that is the uh, interrupter part of the circuit breaker. And this, wherever we use more than one interrupter, that is that breaker is called as multi-break circuit breaker, clear? So that is interrupter. Now, of course, when we are connecting the supply to our interrupter, we need to also maintain significant distance between that because there is a possibility that a person is coming and working on this operating mechanism. So there must be sufficient clearance. And for that, we use a support insulator. It will also be made up of porcelain or a silicon composite insulator. It will be basically a hollow insulator from which the operating rod will be going and there will be the insulating medium provided in this support insulator as well. So the main function of support insulator is to maintain the sufficient distance from HV terminal to ground because the person who is up working here must have the safety clearance and hence this support insulator is necessary. Then moving on, the another most important part is the operating mechanism. Now this is a complete mechanical assembly. So breaker is mostly a mechanical device, you can say that. And this is a complete mechanical assembly. So in past, there have been uh, hydraulic pneumatic uh, circuit breakers as well, which uses hydraulic and pneumatic uh, operating mechanism for its operation. Now we want to separate the two contacts and those two contacts need a very heavy force because we want to operate that at a particular speed because if the opening happens slowly then there is no use it must open very quickly and for that we need to have force and that force uh, is provided by the operating mechanism of the circuit breaker. Nowadays uh, all the circuit breakers that you will see are coming with the spring spring mechanism. So one spring will be dedicatedly used for the closing operation and the another spring will be used for the tripping up operation or the opening operation. So closing spring and tripping spring. Very, very important part of uh, the circuit breaker, the operating mechanism. Here it will be uh, installed in this panel that you see here. And from here, the operating rod would be going inside this uh, support insulator. And from there, it would be connected to the interrupter. Clear? And this box not only consists of the operating mechanism, this box will also have, uh, yeah, before that, you will see here the uh, image. You can see the two springs are connected. And this is the operating rod, which is connected to the interrupter. You can see from this hollow insulator, there is this rod moving. And as I was saying, this box will not only have the mechanism, but they will also have all the control circuitry. So definitely to perform the correct operation, the breaker must have some uh, electrical logics and all these logics, all these control circuitries, MCBs, contactors and everything will also be provided inside this uh, cubicle. We call it as secondary schematic of the circuit breaker. And if you are interested in learning everything, all the small details about the uh, circuit schematic of circuit breaker then i have a dedicated course on that i'll provide link for that course down in the description you can go and check it out it's very very helpful to understand everything about the circuit breaker control schematics so that is operating mechanism and this box is also called as the control box or the mechanism box or the marshalling box clear then all these things uh of course, we have the three poles, we have three interrupters, we have three support uh, insulators. It must be assembled on something. And the frame on which we assemble this is called as the base frame. So this horizontal steel portion, what you see here, is the base frame. And on that, it is screwed. You see all these things are screwed to this base frame. Now, all this assembly, we are connecting 145 kV, 170 kV, 245 kV supply. Now, we should maintain a significant amount of distance uh, uh, between uh, the life part and to the ground. So definitely, we cannot directly put this base frame on the ground and then connect it. We would need something so that something will support uh, this complete assembly. And that is done by structure, which is called as the support structure made up of steel. And uh, it is uh, necessary to maintain the significant and safe clearance between the live part and the ground. 
clear understood so those are the main parts of the sf6 circuit breaker we saw interrupter unit which is necessary to interrupt the normal as well as abnormal currents then support insulator which is necessary to maintain the significant distance here from live part operating mechanism again very important part in the circuit breaker uh, which helps in opening and closing operation and then in order to support this complete circuit breaker assembly we also need a support structure right so those are the components of sf6 circuit breaker in the coming video we'll talk about the different components of vacuum circuit breaker so make sure you subscribe to the channel with bell notification icon turned on so that you don't miss any of the update right so i hope you understood the main components of sf6 circuit breaker i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning